Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're celebrating our third anniversary. Can you believe it? Join us as we talk about our favorite episodes, what we've learned from each other, and take a trip behind the scenes of Midlife Matters podcast. Let's get started. Listeners, we're here today celebrating the third anniversary of Midlife Matters. Can you believe it, Mindy and Julie? (laughs) No. (laughs) Honestly shocked that um, I stuck with something for three years other than my husband and children. (laughs) I know this is like my (laughs) longest running hobby. Like I lose passion and interest in doing pretty much everything I try after a period Mm -hmm. of time. (laughs) Well, I kind of feel I I do tend to stick with things maybe a little longer than that, but I think this is, it kind of makes me think of like a band, you know, keeping the band together. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. You know, it's like, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to keep three people together, you know? Right. It's true. Um, right. Schedules and right. phases of life and all of that. So mm-hmm. I'm right. a lot of <laughs> life has happened between the three of us over the yeah. past three years. Yeah. 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 So I am definitely surprised and I'm happy about it too, but I mm-hmm. think listeners were just all three of us sitting back here surprised <laughs> that we're even still podcasting three years later. <laughs> Literally patting myself on the back, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we've Way covered, go, guys. Yeah, we've covered a lot of ground on this podcast. But today we want to look at what we've done in the past year. We want to focus on looking back and seeing how we've grown and changed during year three, as well as highlighting some of our favorite episodes because. Time goes by really fast. And as I scrolled through like my podcast feed through our past episodes, as I looked at the titles, I was like, oh, I forgot we did that one. Oh, yeah, Mm -hmm. I forgot about that one. Uh Uh-huh. You know, you really only remember like the last two or three. (laughs) Right. Or I think that seemed like it was just last month and it was in February. Or You know what I mean? Like, I can't believe how quickly it's gone at the same time. Well, that's very true, too. So... I really had to do, I even had to go back and listen to parts of a couple because I really had a hard time remembering exactly what we had covered. I agree. I looked at the show notes and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot we missed on that. Yeah. And here I was about to tell you guys, we should do an episode on perfectionism. Oh wait, we did that with a model life. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) but only with houses. We didn't do it. I don't think like with a lot of other things. So I still think that that's a topic yeah. you could do. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Future yeah. Topic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's start out with our most fun episode because I think that everybody enjoys different things. And I'm always curious to find out what struck someone as their most enjoyable episode, the most fun one they had to prepare for, or what they thought was the funniest. So, Mindy, why don't you kick us off? What did you think was the most fun episode this year? Good. Well, I thought this was a no-brainer. It's literally in the title of episode 124, the funny stories that we told on ourselves. Oh, that Um, was a good one. I loved hearing you guys basically tell on yourself things that you have gone through in the past with your families, with your children, embarrassing stories, those things that come up at the dinner table that you retell and laugh about years and years later. So that was a lot of fun because... Every time I learn something more about you guys, especially like a funny story, you know, or when things didn't go right and it turned out hilarious, or at least everybody survived. Mm-hmm. Or we that laughed about just, it year late, years later. Yeah, yeah, we're laughing now. <laughs> You're laughing now. You maybe weren't laughing then. Those are just my favorite things. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're encouraging. And they encourage other people that, oh, they've had a they've yes. had a bad story and lived to tell about it. And they're actually laughing exactly. right now. So I know I do feel better when I hear them. I'm like, Oh, good. I'm not alone. And honestly, learning about you guys talking about high school, let's talk about high school. That was actually really funny to me, which was episode 112. Um, hearing about all your high school stories was super fun. Oh, that's great. I had forgotten about that one. That one. <laughs> yeah, that one was like last November or December, like very early yes. in our third year. 
That's so, right. Yeah, yeah. Our per- our anniversary, in case listeners are wondering, is like the first week of November. So we're kind of going back November 2020 to November mm-hmm. 2021. So yeah. Julie, what was your most fun episode? I had a couple, but I think my most fun had to be unpopular opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought we laughed a lot and we did get a lot of fun responses on that one. And, you know, we were brave. We didn't get canceled. We still have listeners. <laughs> Yay. And, and I learned a lot about you two. And I still like you both, even though apparently mm. one or both of you don't like pets, Chick-fil-A chicken and Disney World. But <laughs> <laughs> we're still friends. <laughs> and you accept me despite my disdain for country music and my love of winter. So... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that is true. It is fun to find out, you know, even a good friend, they you may not know something just basic like that about them. Like, right. I mean, maybe you knew I hate banana desserts, or maybe you've been pushing <laughs> banana cream pudding on me for a long time. And I say no, uh-uh. thank you every time. <laughs> I didn't, but now anytime I see one, I think Marie doesn't like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> or peanut butter. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I also really loved the social quandaries and modern manners episode, which was <gasps> yes. 140. Um, I think it was really fun to take a stab at giving advice because no one had asked us for that advice. So I feel like it's oh, we right. should a a subtitle would be "No humans were harmed in the making of this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was definitely fun to see how we stack up against modern Mrs. Manners. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think and we all just... voted her wrong at one point, didn't we? Right. We, we did. <laughs> yeah. We did. She put the the solution off on everybody else. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, I thought one of my most fun episodes was generational differences, and we did mm. that back end of October, maybe early November last year. And I think that generational differences are just funny because they come up so often. Like, you know, a simple one was that my daughter never has any napkins or or she'll just no Kleenex. It's like, I just, I can't function in a house with those basic things. And Julie was saying that her daughter does the same thing. And if she ever stops using toilet paper, Julie won't be able to go there anymore. (laughs) Because this younger generation uses less paper products than we did. And, you know, it's just funny. Like, we also talked about differences between us and our parents. I don't think any of us, except maybe Julie, are writing handwritten thank you notes much anymore. (laughs) Still less, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we're doing less of that. But, um, you know, I just thought that was funny to kind of highlight the generational differences and really laugh about them. Because a lot of times, even this weekend, it came up in a conversation between myself, my daughter and my daughter-in-law, we were talking about weddings, and there was an issue. And they were like, Oh, well, you know, I can't believe that people would do that. And I was like, you know, it really wasn't a big deal back then. Or that's just the way people didn't think about that. You know, like, I don't, I think you always think that your generation is the only way to have done something. And that's just the way it should be done. And really, it it was normal for previous generations to do something different. And they didn't think much of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And aren't you noticing now as we all have adult children that it's changing and Mm -hmm. we're the ones that are the older generation to them? (laughs) Yeah. And I'm looking at them thinking, like, I can't believe, like, that's how things operate now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or like our parents now. (laughs) How are you? (laughs) Yes, yes. So it's just very different. And we're on the out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think what was great about our episode is we came to the conclusion that, you know, none of the generations are wrong. It just helps you understand each other so much better if you know the why. It's true. I didn't recall any of the episodes that you just spoke of because I only looked back to January. So I didn't go back far enough. Oh, <laughs> oh well, that's okay. You know, until I didn't, I didn't remember them until you brought them up, but yeah, those were both great episodes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about most encouraging episodes. What, I mean, we try to be encouraging on Midlife Matters. We try to end on an encouraging note, no matter what we are talking about. And we've talked about some hard right. things this year, but we really, right. really do. I think that might even be in our tagline on our podcast artwork that we're encouraging women in the midlife year. So we do try to do that. But what did you personally feel was your most encouraging episode this year? For me, it was episode 127, The Mystery of Prayer. 
Was that yours, Mindy? Me too. <laughs> go, Julie, go. Uh, <laughs> I just think I've probably prayed more this year than any other year of my mm-hmm. life. And there's prayer is so confusing and it can really bring about a feeling of shame for not doing it right. Mm-hmm. That's what I've always struggled with it. I'm not doing it right. Mm-hmm. And I was just encouraged and challenged by hearing y'all's very real and honest thoughts on prayers, like that it is confusing. Sometimes we have doubts. Sometimes mm-hmm. we don't you know, know what to do with those. And and this wasn't a really deep theological discussion. It was just how we pray. And I was encouraged that despite all the, you know, the confusion and doubts we have, that we still all do it. And mm, I know right. when I ask for prayer, you know, from you guys, I know you do it and I feel them. And um, it's just, it is a mystery. And that was, I think yes. that was the conclusion of our episode was mm-hmm. it's a mystery, but we do it. And it was, it was just encouraging mm-hmm. to me. Well, Julie, I'm so glad that you brought that up. That was definitely my first number one encouraging episode. So since you talked about that, I'll talk about my second encouraging episode then was episode 108, the life changing magic of dinner. And it seems so silly compared, you know, how is that as encouraging as prayer? Well, it's not as encouraging as prayer. Mm -hmm. However, I have thought about this multiple times that we came to the conclusion that Really just asking, we've talked about hospitality multiple times, but in this particular episode, we talked about how you can really get to know someone by breaking bread with them and um, really just asking someone to your home and, and having a meal together. So we focused on just having a meal together, the conversations that you're able to have, and we all eat every day for the most part. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it just was encouraging to think about, you know, coupling mealtime with getting to know somebody. Mm -hmm. And that was the one based on the Ted talk, right? It was, it was based on the Ted talk. Yeah. Yeah. That was an encouraging episode. And I think we're always also encouraged when we do eat with other people. So, you know, I just, you just can't lose with that one. Right. Um, I thought I'm I'm encouraged by other people's stories a lot of times. And Julie and I, we were in a Bible study last fall, fall of 2020, and we heard our friend Jennifer Oliver share a little bit of her testimony. And I thought to myself, oh, I'd really like to interview her on the podcast. And then in the spring, Mindy and I did interview her on the podcast. And so her episode was called Becoming a Widow in Midlife. And this is a really sad topic, but I just felt like she, her testimony is so encouraging. She lost her husband to cancer when her youngest son was a senior in high school. So she was in midlife and she talked about, you know, the things that she struggled with and she talked about the ways that God provided for her. And I just feel like her story is one that gives hope in a very dark situation. And so it was encouraging to me and I hope it was encouraging for listeners to hear that too. Yeah. It was. It was. I that topic is on my list, um, but under a different category, um, mm-hmm. because it was just so heartfelt, and um, she was so full of hope, but very real about just the journey that she had been on. Yeah, and to be very honest, I was excited to have her on the podcast, but I wasn't a part of that, and I haven't been able to listen to it yet. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I, yeah, well, that's understandable. But I will. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, let's talk about what we've learned because it's amazing how we're always changing and growing, even though we think we know everything. <laughs> like, like you think, well, what more am I really going to learn? But then somebody brings up a topic, and you're like, okay, well, I'll look into that. And and then you do learn something. And Mm -hmm. so what episode caused you to learn the most this year? (laughs) I'm going to laugh as I say my answer. I do have two episodes, just like this is typical rebel behavior on my part. Marie asks, what's your favorite? And I give two. What's Uh your most encouraging? I give two. Okay. I'm sorry. (laughs) That's just, that's just rebel (laughs) over here. Um, but okay. So I have two. the first one I'm laughing about because I really did learn a lot and it's kind of embarrassing, but, um, I learned a lot about pelvic floor health uh, in episode 121. (laughs) I actually learned a lot about that too. <laughs> that was a very eye-opening um conversation. It was really intriguing to me and it's something that all women deal with but we don't always talk about. So, um in the privacy of your own home if you're, you know, concerned about this or wondering about it, <laughs> give that a listen. It was actually very good. 
But the one that I've thought about the most, I keep learning about it and I keep talking about it is the compare yourself to yourself episode 138. Mm -hmm. That is something I could go back and re-listen to almost once a month because it is still a struggle. Um, I felt like I learned a lot, yet I still need to learn it, if that makes sense. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. That's an ongoing struggle, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. Compare yeah. yourself to yourself, um, not to somebody else. So just realizing that we're all at a different stage in life and not to... I don't know how you even had it in that statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's ongoing. <laughs> we can't end now. it because we're still trying to learn it. But I, I also thought that was a deep episode. And, and at the end of it, you think, oh, good. Well, I'm going to not do that, whatever thing it is again. And then, you know, two hours pass and you're already doing it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. All right, Julie, what did you learn the most this year? I have three I'm going to mention, but okay. two really quickly were episodes 138 and 148, which were both the Jordan Peterson Rules for Life episodes, mm -hmm. the two chapters. One was on learning to really listen and the other was the comparison. So I did get a lot out of that because I did read the entire book and I just really kind of dug deep into those chapters. Um, but Really, I think w where I learned something that is a little bit different take on this question was episode 146, When the Well Runs Dry. Mm. Um, that was just a really real episode. And I remember texting back and forth like we often do, like, hey, girls, what what is our topic this week? And mm -hmm. it was kind of like radio silence from you guys. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, OK, uh, what are we going to talk about? And then I think maybe the day before we we're supposed to record Marie breaks the silence and she, she just says the well has run dry. And I remember taking a hike that afternoon with a friend and I was kind of telling our predicament, like, we just don't know what we're going to talk about. And, mm -hmm. you know, I even asked Marie and she said, the wells run dry. And, and my friend immediately said, there's your topic. Like she just instantly mm. knew that that's what mm -hmm. we should talk about. And I thought, you know, so much I look for like some well-developed topic and, or a really interesting guest to have on. I thought, we need to pay attention to how we're all feeling, too, and that if we're all feeling something, there's a good chance a lot of other women out there are are feeling the same thing. So it's mm -hmm. just important to stay tuned in to what's going on in each of our lives and to tap into those feelings. And I think that's a big part of what listeners enjoy about the podcast is knowing they're not alone in this kind of weird, scary, lonely, and often exciting place called midlife. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think some of our most enjoyable episodes for me come out of just regular conversation, conversation that we mm -hmm. might have just had on a walk with a friend, not really, right. you know, a specific topic, but just that we're kind of working through different issues. Yeah. yeah. And I think we get the most response from listeners to on those episodes. Mm -hmm. So that's telling. We need to pay attention to that. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, the episode that I learned the most on is kind of obvious from the title, like you said earlier about the fun one, Mindy. This one's called Discover Something New, episode 132. <laughs> and I got this idea because I was listening to a podcast that um, they were recommending like table topics games. And you know, those 100 questions and they're just silly questions. Like if you had to have tea with a fictional character, who would you pick? Or, um, you know, what's one thing you've won and how did you win it? But if you listen to people's <laughs> answers, you usually learn something new and fun about them. So I enjoyed going through a lot of those questions with you guys and just finding out what your answers were. I just thought that was interesting. So if listeners want to know just random facts, but it also <laughs> goes a little bit deeper, you can go back and right. listen to discover something new and you'll learn more about us. I know that we have learned a lot this year, but we've also had to go through a lot and so what was the hardest topic you thought that we tackled on the podcast this year? And I don't think that anyone can have a harder topic than the episode where Julie announced John's cancer diagnosis. Like, I think that episode brought people to tears and... Mm -hmm. um, you know, there isn't anything harder going on in any of our lives than that. But um, I think, again, with that episode, we still had 
some encouragement to say. And I think that episode was called The Hard Parts of Life. Mm-hmm. It was. So it was I back think, yeah. in like February, I think. So if mm-hmm. listeners want to go back. Episode 122. Okay. If listeners want to go back and listen to that. And Mindy shared her story of Bryce being unemployed and getting a new mm-hmm. job. And Julie talked about John's cancer diagnosis. And um, I just, that was for me, I don't know that there could be a harder topic. How about for you guys? Well, that's the one I picked <laughs> as well. Um and it, it aired February 24th, and that was just about one month after John's diagnosis. And like I said earlier, in some ways, that seems like a lifetime ago. And then I can't believe that that is in 2021, and we're almost to the end of 2021. Mm-mm. Um and, you know, trying to remember back to that time, I don't remember all the fear and the sadness and the questioning as much as you might think I would. Like, I have to really think and try to remember. So I kind of went through each month since then. And I think about like all the hospital stays and the procedures to undo things that this invasive cancer had caused and the pneumonia and then the zero white blood cell count from the treatment. It, you know, right. it, it's all just kind of a blur now that he's doing better. and. I looked at the our list of, of podcast titles, and the one that came out right before that, interestingly enough, was Things I Want to Try in 2021. Mm. <laughs> and it's just a good reminder that while it's good to plan and dream, we never really know what tomorrow holds. So I just hold my plans much more loosely these days. You know, we've talked about that and just try to live more a more grateful life. Like instead of thinking about so much about what I've accomplished at the end of each day, I just ask what was good about today. Like, Mm. even if it was a bad day, Mm -hmm. I got to pick something good (laughs) out of Mm -hmm. the day, you know, Mm -hmm. or or all the days might be bad, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's an ongoing hard part, but um, there's also been a lot of good out of it too. So, Yeah, easily. That was the episode I wrote down. Um, We're all in unison on that one because it's hard to be really vulnerable. You don't always know who your audience is. And it's hard enough to say something out loud that you're dealing with. So, you know, that that's so big in your own life. So then to not only talk about it, but talk about it to an audience um, is scary. And so for, mm-hmm. for us, every time we open up and we kind of give a piece of ourselves you know, you kind of wonder how that's going to be taken. And honestly, I have loved our friends and our audience and our family members. That was a scary thing to do, but for people to then be so encouraging, the prayer, the support that came out of that, you know, hearing all the encouragement for Julie and for John and people still ask me, how's John doing? You know, people that have never met Julie. And I, I think that says something, you know, I think that says a lot about Um, We all want to be connected, even if it's in this kind of interesting, like space of a podcast, you know, Mm -hmm. like we didn't grow up with podcasts. This is kind of new for midlife women, but to be able to connect in this way is very encouraging um, to have that type of support from our audience, the Mm -hmm. prayer, the encouragement. Yeah. Having online friends is definitely a unique (laughs) experience, Mm -hmm. you know, because I, I just never really thought that that would be that meaningful, but it really, really is. And I have actually made connections with some of our listeners through just Instagram messaging. Like they message me regularly and check up and they're willing to share their stories because they've been through something similar or they're offering resources, you know, like, or Mm -hmm. just to listen. And, you know, I think, wow, I don't even know this person, but I mean, they feel like they know us. So Mm -hmm. uh, I wish, I wish we could know them as well, you know, Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, well, that definitely was a hard thing. But like you said, Julie, we've seen some good parts come out of it, too. Not that we wouldn't Mm -hmm. trade it back, but Mm -hmm. just that God does um, bring good out of things. All right. So did an episode change your life this year? This is such a big (laughs) A, a big episode. job for a, for an episode. <laughs> <laughs> like it changed my life if I like incorporated a new recipe. I right. Mean, yeah. Like... <laughs> it changed my life if I managed to remember it more than five minutes after it ended. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I had put down the episode that you guys talked about earlier, which was about comparison and ways to keep our inner critic a little more quiet. And I think... Like you guys seem to gravitate towards the comparing yourself to who you 
used to be versus other people. But for me, I gravitate towards why do I do that? Or why do I need to do that? To silence that inner critic, because I feel like the Mm -hmm. inner critic can be so loud. So I think, you know, have I, have I stopped criticizing myself internally? No, but at least we did talk about it. And I could use some tools if I remembered. (laughs) Well, at least maybe you recognize it as an inner critic. (laughs) True, true. And you, you check it sometimes. Yeah. 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 I also listed that episode again. That was just a very good episode that compare yourself to yourself. But the one that I'd have to say, especially when I looked back, I was like, yes, episode 107. Let's go camping with girl camper Janine Pettit. Now, the reason I put this here in the change your life category is her vibrancy for life is unmatched. Mm, (laughs) And mm -hmm. Knowing that your life is not ending at midlife, hearing the stories of the women that she encounters, being able to pull a fifth wheel or change a tire or back up the camper. I mean, her whole, that whole episode was mind blowing to me because I so often say, I can't do that because I'm a girl. I can't do that because it's too hard or that's a man's job. Or, you know, it's just Mm -hmm. like these, we make these rules for ourselves. Or, you know, and Mm -hmm. you limit yourself. She is unlimited. And (laughs) it just like opened my mind and my horizons to the things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, instead of saying, what can't I do? You say, what can I do? She changed my mind about women in midlife dramatically. And she was so fun to talk to. Yeah, she was really and fun she to talk has to. Um, a Facebook group that I follow. And it's just amazing. All of these stories of women that are maybe recently divorced or widowed, and they just buy a camper and are gone for six months. It's amazing. And they're meeting all <laughs> these wonderful women all across the country. And, uh, you know, she empowers them to do it. And, and my friend Janet, who who kind of connected me with her, is going to camper college next month. Really? I didn't even know such a thing yeah. existed. That's cool. Yeah. Well, it's Jean Pettit. She's oh. it's her thing. And she helps women, you know, be equipped to do this. And oh, that I thought, is that's so, so cool. cool. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah, the whole episode. I'm like, wow, really? Wow. <laughs> Well, my episodes were on a much shallower level. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) I I want to hear it. (laughs) Let's hear it. I picked two. How to shop at Aldi because (laughs) that changed my grocery shopping, my menu planning. Um, My hatred of the grocery store is appeased a little bit. I don't mind it as much if I'm going into Aldi. Okay. And also the welcoming fall with the five senses changed my approach to decorating because it was a relief to know that I can do less and still participate in celebrating the seasons because I love mm-hmm. the seasons. I love fall. I love the holidays. So it would like right now, the, the the circumstances I'm in in life, I don't have the energy to do as much, but yet it would make me really sad to just skip over it as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of okay. living in that tension. Like, what can I do? Yeah, I can't do too much. And so I have always loved, you know, the whole harvesting things from nature. Like when I go on trips, my souvenirs are pine cones and rocks and acorns and things like that. So I was already doing that. So just kind of expounding on that and bringing all that stuff in. And I don't have to right. store it. I can just throw it away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and next year it'll be different, you know, mm-hmm. so. That one has impacted me, and I look forward to kind of doing that in each season, and, and including other things, too, like the foods I eat, the smells in my house, and the music I listen to, like mm-hmm. all those things working kind of in sync to tune my heart and my mind into what's going on in the world around me. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. And I just have to laugh because even with you doing less, you were still the only one of the three of us that posted anything fall about our homes. Oh, no, <laughs> I Mindy did. did. I totally Oh, I'm sorry, did. Mindy. You did. That's right. Mindy did post a story because, Mindy, you said that you are fully decorated for fall when you put out your give thanks Sign. sign. Is that true? <laughs> Is that what it says? Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's right. And she that's was right. fully decorated. I Hey. I did it. I like the bar is set high and I achieved it. 
There you go. Yeah. And um, we know yeah, she I, loves those sides. I, I know, right? Like, I what can't. What episode was that in? That was Home Trends We Don't Want to See Come Around Again? Or, no, it was What's Out in 2021, maybe? No, it was the Home Trends You Don't Want okay. to See Come Out. Because okay. it talked about the signs. And I okay. was like, I still struggle with not buying all the signs. I think about all the home signs that really speak to me. And I want to get them all to the t-shirts that really speak to me. And I want to get them all. Like oh. the workout shirts that are funny. <laughs> the fall shirts. The Christmas shirts, the Hallmark shirts. Like, look what I'm wearing. What does it say? Wifey. <laughs> it says wifey. This is my favorite sweatshirt. And I'm literally a walking sign. Yeah, that was the home trends that should go away and not come back. I I use great self control to oh, not lie. That's but one too out. funny. Yeah, all the yeah. I will not get rid of my give thanks because that is where it's at, y'all. You got to give thanks. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Can't give that up. No, can't give that up. <laughs> All right. Well, what is a topic that we want to see in the future? And you guys, I just drew a complete <laughs> blank because it is so hard to think of topics, but I am totally open to what you guys want to see and what our listeners want to see. Like, mm-hmm. send us all the topics. If Midlife Matters goes off the air, it will be because we ran out of topic ideas. So if you want to hear us every week, send us ideas. <laughs> I was going to say, Marie, you can't use the well has gone dry again. No, I know. And you guys, we don't, listeners, we don't even need like a whole big thing. Send us a kernel. Send us a thought that you would like to hear and we'll take it. A thought to flesh it out. Yes. That's all all we need. Yeah. With this, yeah, my, I'm blank. And the only things that have come through my mind are topics that we have done that I feel like we could talk about all over again. And I would still get a lot from it because I'm at the lonely teenage years again. Mm. I have found myself in that place and, you know, I've got two teenage boys left in the house and my life is changing and they're the last two and it's getting quieter Mm. and I'm not okay with that. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm like, we did a topic on the loneliness in teenage years. And I just feel like we can, I can just talk about that again. (laughs) Well, that's true. Because sometimes when we talk about a topic, we are seeing it through a certain lens. And six months to a year later, we can see it through a completely different lens. It's yeah, true. life changes and um, yes. you're in a different place. So the topic changes, you know, now, like I want to talk about hospitality again. I think we can mm-hmm. always talk about that. Settling a home. I, I will never tire of talking about fashion and midlife or how to, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's just so many topics and things that, you know, I feel like we could go back and do all the same topics again. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, our goal is always to to make listeners feel like they're joining us like for coffee or something. And it's true. If you go out to coffee with the same group of people every week, you're going to talk about the same things. Just a little different spin on them over and over again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. How about you, Julie? What topic do you want to see? Well, I thought I could give a little plug for maybe a topic that I know we're going to start starting in November that will run um, each month for the next year. And it's it's a book called Happy School, and it's written by a mentor of mine from college. She's from Memphis, and she's a family and marriage counselor. And she wrote this book for women, and it's a self-help book, but it's written in a fictionalized style, so it's kind of funny. But she counsels a girl through this fictional story. Mm. And she, you know, uses a lot of her principles. And so we thought it would be fun to to talk about, you know, take each chapter once a month and talk sure. about it. And um, the author has also written a study guide, and she has a book club online that I've been a part of. So I've read this book twice. And I just think it'll be really fun to talk about. And I've even talked to her um, again recently, and she's agreed to come on at the end of the series. So good. Mm -hmm. She's a really fun person. Yeah, I'll put that in our show notes so that if any listeners want to buy that book and start reading it and like kind of come along once a month with us, you can do that. Yeah, it's it's called Happy School by Julie Noah Gordon, and you can get it on Amazon. This is going to be, I've started reading it, and this is going to be on the level of the compare yourself to yourself for me, because just reading it, it has stuck with me. And I know that these patterns of our thinking is what, you know, she's talking about. 
I'm excited about this upcoming series, even though it is a self-help book. It's been very easy for me to read and enjoyable. I think this is going to be, we're going to have some great discussions. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's done in a fun way. I also will say here, if uh, if I can, about a, a guest possibility. Oh, I think yes. Min, um, Marie's going to laugh. Mindy, you might you might be excited about this. I don't know. I think it would be cool to have Kathy Lee Gifford on because <gasps> that's who I said she, in our first year anniversary, Julie. You did? I did. Our first birthday episode fifty three. Our first birthday episode. I, don't even I said that. Kathy Lee Gifford. Well, she lives here now, <laughs> and I just think, okay, she gave up a career at the Today Show to mm-hmm. live in mm-hmm. Franklin, Tennessee. You see her walking around downtown. She did like the lighting of the Franklin tree. Like she's involved locally. Uh, She started a new career. She's widowed. I mean, she's got it all going on in Mm -hmm. life. And I just think she would be fun to hear from. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you can get her, Julie, we'll interview her. (laughs) I would love to talk to Kathy Lee. She She might be be kind of busy on the Hallmark channel. I don't know. But um, (laughs) if any listeners have an in with Kathy Lee, plug our podcast. (laughs) We'd love to talk to her. All right. Well, what have you gained this year? Because not only do we feel like our listeners gain something, but just by putting together the episodes, we gain things. And so what have you personally gained this year, Mindy? This year, um, I don't know about you girls, I hate to even say this, but basically I found that once a year, I want to quit the podcast. (laughs) And I hate to say that, but it is true. Yeah. Because... A lot has happened in the past three years with the three of us. And at some point, the well runs dry Mm -hmm. and it happens once a year. And I talk to my husband, I talk to Abby and I'm like, it's, it's hit me. You know, this happened a year ago. It's hit me again. I just want to quit. It is always so encouraging to me though. Every time I get on with Marie and Julie, every time I get on with you guys, that's what keeps me going. Mm. That I don't Mm. always know who's listening. Um, I do pray that this is an encouragement to the women that listen. But I have gained this year a longevity and a consistency that I would have quit something else. Mm -hmm. But I can't quit on my friendship with Marie and Julie. Mm -hmm. And so our conversation, our friendship, I have been virtual the entire three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily easy. I don't see you guys at church. I don't Mm -hmm. see you at the store or the library or walking. I don't get to be in person with you both, but I personally feel like I've had a consistent friendship, though my Mm -hmm. life has been kind of, you know, inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm just very thankful for the friendship I have with Marie and Julie. And if it happens to touch someone else out there and encourage them, then that's the cherry on top. Right. Right. No, I I hear you, Mindy. Um, In 2020, Steve and I were on John and Julie's back porch. And, you know, there was not much going on in 2020. And I mean, I was going through my usual, I've done something for a while. I know how to do it. If I wanted to do something with it, I could. But, you know, I've scratched that itch type of feeling. And Julie was like, oh, you're not thinking about quitting the podcast, are you? And and uh, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe secretly, but and <laughs> I know, I just, and I think John's like, or maybe Julie said like, it's kind of the only thing I have going on in my life right now. And then I was like, oh no, I no, I'm not, I'm not thinking of that. I am not <laughs> thinking of that. And I remember on the way home, Steve saying, Marie, you that you got to keep on. Going. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is all Julie has. <laughs> this is my whole life. And, it's so funny. And so I think of that conversation. But you know what? I never want to quit having conversations. It's not that. The things that I that tire me out about podcasting are topics I don't know what people want to hear. And I will say that like when I look back at the topics we've done this year. Like we've interviewed some interesting people and we've discussed a lot of things, but what I've really gained is the chance to talk about my feelings. If I'm feeling something or something's on my mind, I have a really hard time thinking or talking about anything else than that. 
like I've texted Julie and Mindy several times with these like tangent things. They're probably like, where is her head? Like I'm mad about something or something is weighing me down. And they're like, well, we can't talk about that, but we could talk about this. And just the process, because I am a verbal processor, just the process of talking out some of those things is so good for me. So I feel like the biggest thing I've gained is just kind of a chance to safely talk about things that are on my mind and feel like I've had a bit of a voice. That's what I've gained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. And I, I think that's funny because um, it, it, I guess what I said to you was kind of equivalent to what when you said, don't squash my dreams. Oh, right. <laughs> when I it's first true. wanted to start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I know that we have listeners that appreciate and and love listening because when I go to something like I went to an event at church the other night and people came up and said, I know you don't really know me, but I know you because I listen every week and I so appreciate what you get girls share. And I went to John's high school reunion and people all over the country, you know, came up and said, I, I love your podcast. We I listen every week. So um, I think it has been an encouragement to other people. And like you said, Mindy, it's it's almost like we're just having conversations and it secondarily may encourage someone else. You know, it's like, right. um, if it happens to, that's great. And this has been a challenging year for sure, like with John's diagnosis being in January. And, and right after I thought, because this was probably right after that conversation with you, Marie, is I didn't want to give up the podcast. But then I started thinking, John is so sick. How am I going to? keep doing this? Like, Mm -hmm. how will I have the time? How will I have the emotional energy? How will I even be able to speak without crying? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I envision like, oh, if I'm going to do this, it's going to be very fake. Mm -hmm. You know, like I can't, I can't get on here and laugh. That's not appropriate, you know? Mm -hmm. And John has just led by example and shown me like, he's not going to be defined by this disease. He wants life to be as normal as possible. And he wants particularly mine to be as normal as possible and not in a denial sense, you know, like, Oh, this isn't really happening, but just making the best of the situation and making the best of each day. And so I haven't faked it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I look back at our topics and I feel like we've laughed more this year than the past two. Mm. Like we've had more fun episodes and we've laughed at each other, with each other, (laughs) at other people (laughs) and in the middle of some really, really hard stuff. And that is something I never expected to happen Mm -hmm. back in January. Um, I just thought I'm going to have to quit or it's going to be fake. And it has not been that way at all. And and I've had some pretty low moments, of course, and I think I've been honest about those, Mm -hmm. but I don't want them to rule my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I still want to be able to laugh about things that are funny and that are, Mm -hmm. and that are good. And, um, so I don't know. I just, I am encouraged each week when I talk with you two and I look forward to it and I know that I'm better for it. afterwards. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So I guess that's what we personally gain is just the chance to talk every week because I know that if we quit the podcast, Mindy and I might talk two times a year. Just because you live far away, you know, like it wouldn't be the same. Sometimes I think I'm not even really doing it for the listeners. I'm doing it because we all three enjoy it. So, (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we each get intrinsic value out of that. And I always leave our conversations feeling better. And you totally said it, both of you. But, you know, I could be just really struggling with something and coming to the table to talk. And we are never fake we're all very genuine and we've been very vulnerable, but we're honest about our hurts, but we're honest about our joys too. And people are so complex that you can have all these emotions all at the same time. And so just being able to talk, I don't feel so alone in my world, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, I think we all gain a lot. It's good for us to look back and see what we're gaining because it gives us encouragement to keep going. But what personal challenges did you need to overcome to podcast this year? Like Mindy, when you Mm -hmm. were thinking about quitting, what personal challenges were you facing? Or was it just kind of a boredom thing? Or was it like, I don't have time for this right now? 
No, it really is kind of, um, you know, almost Julie mentioned, I don't know how I'm going to do that in the future. It's projecting into the future, your life. And so knowing that, um, we were in a transition year, knowing that we were going to be moving, um, Abby ended up getting engaged and it really is just, I don't know how I'm going to schedule a weekly discussion when I'm trying to move, plan a wedding, mm -hmm. you know, right. and, and keep everybody, you know, moving in my house and trying to get them into a thriving place. It's just uprooting and planning a wedding at the same time. I was overwhelmed. One of those is overwhelming enough, let alone mm -hmm. two happening at simultaneously. And so it's more just when I try to, you know, basically eat an elephant that I think there's just, you know, I don't see this happening, but somehow the three of us continue to find a weekly time despite mm -hmm. health, moving, <laughs> mm -hmm. major events, kids leaving the house. Like there's all of these things that we've gone through in this year, girls, I don't know if y'all agree or not, but I feel like it's been the hardest year for the three of us. We've gone through the most, mm -hmm. or I mm -hmm. feel like we've gone through the most and we have struggled more this year. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Our, <with> right. <laughs> own personal lives. And so for the three of us to be able to continue to find a time and space for this is just truly amazing. Um, and mm -hmm. so those are my personal challenges yet it, every week it would happen. It's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. It's happened again. I don't know why I'm always surprised, but the three of us seem to find, <laughs> we seem <laughs> to keep making it happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I don't think as, I mean, as I'd like to think we would, you know, I don't know how intentional we would be at getting together every week if we weren't doing this, you mm -hmm. know, I just think it keeps us, mm -hmm. keeps us intentional and accountable and it's a good thing. And, um, I didn't see how it was going to happen either, but I'm glad, I'm glad it did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. What about your personal challenges, Julie? I mean, they seem obvious on the surface with John's cancer diagnosis, but did you have other things that played into like, how am I going to podcast this year? Well, like you said, Marie, it's hard for you to talk about something when something's on your mind. For me, it's it was maybe a little bit of the opposite. Like I had something grave on my mind. I needed a voice and an outlet in a, in another way. Mm -hmm. Like it was mm -hmm. somewhat of a distraction. Like I had something else mm -hmm. to think about. And um, and it's been good because it wasn't just a superficial cover up distraction like it mm -hmm. did keep me facing my thoughts and fears and doubts like through mm -hmm. the prayer you know like almost every week even if it's talking about Aldi's I feel like or talking about Aldi mm -hmm. I feel like we still get below the surface eventually <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and yeah. so it it has been good for me in that way and um I just appreciate um y'all's friendship and you know um Marie and I are here together, and I would say that the the one of the best things that Frank can give is the gift of their presence. And Mindy, I feel like I've had that with you too, even though you're not physically here because of this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear your words during the week that things you've said yeah. on the podcast. I still hear about them and uh, hear them and think about them. Uh, and so you are present, and um, so I appreciate mm. that. Now you're making Mindy cry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even a crier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what have we learned about each other during this process of podcasting over three years? This is again a really big question. I was and I lots of times with big questions, my mind just gives up. I'm like, what could I possibly mm -hmm. say? But <laughs> one of the one of the episodes that we did, and when was it? I wrote it down. Okay, it was last October, How to Make Decisions. That was mm. a really enlightening episode for me because we talked about how people make decisions, whether they're internal or external processors and like what goes into their decision making. And I found that fascinating. You guys are a lot more alike and I'm the different one. But, um, you know, knowing that you're more internal processors and knowing that I'm more of an external processor I don't know. I feel like I liked learning that about you guys. Mm -hmm. I like learning like personality type things, like why someone ticks the way they tick. 
Yeah. And I've realized we're all very different. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's what I, I think is part of what makes this work Mm -hmm. (laughs) is that we are, we, we do see things very differently and approach things differently. And you can always learn something from, you know, like you said, we don't know everything. And so there's always something new to learn. And, um, that was kind of the point of the listening episode, you know, listen to people like they have, like they know something that you don't. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you both are very wise, smart, funny people. And I'm just better off each week after talking with you. And I'm, I th- I'm thankful for that. And I think I knew that about you before this year, but this year has presented a real opportunity to like feel your friendship. In a very mm. practical way. Suffering kind of has a way of moving things from your head 18 inches down to your heart. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you right. know, uh, things that you know, you now really know. Mm-hmm. Right. And in the background, we can hear that Julie's getting stair treads. <laughs> oh, can you I'll just hear let, that? I'll just let listeners know that because but there's nothing we can do about it. But that's real okay. life, people. And real the life is shut. happening. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, Mindy, what have you learned about us over the last three years? <laughs> I, I, I love this question. The reason I thought about it is because I thought we really have been on a journey together, the mm-hmm. three of us. And um, we, again, we've all mentioned this. We've been through a lot of life over the past three years. And so being able to know that you guys are, you're very trustworthy, both of you, um, I can absolutely trust your friendship and I can trust how genuine and and vulnerable you'll be because I know that, like Julie mentioned already, it's hard to anticipate having a conversation. You're like, I can't be fake. I can't hide these feelings that I'm having. And I felt like I've had a lot more dark feelings this Mm. year than Mm -hmm. maybe I've had in the past. And I was thinking, how in the world can I come into this episode and be an encouragement whatsoever? Because I sure don't feel encouraging. Mm. And yet somehow being able to come to both of you and, and to be honest, and I can trust you with that honesty and you're both then vulnerable. You're both so genuine and sincere and you open up as well. And so being able to get to that place and trust you with, you know, the Mm -hmm. hard parts, the dark places that we Mm -hmm. all go through. And then also being able to just, um, I love that you're both so ready to laugh. I would trust absolutely 100% any recommendation that either one of you were to say, because you both will research and find the best thing. Mm. And I would (laughs) totally buy any product that you would recommend. (laughs) Um, You know, I would. (laughs) If Julie had taken a trip to someplace, I wouldn't even look or try to research anything else. I'm just no, like, Julie, just just give me your itinerary. Where to go. That's where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Marie, what kind of washing machine did you buy? Cause that's what I'm buying. Yeah. Cause I know you researched it and I'm perfectly content with taking those recommendations. <laughs> like, why would I do the work if they've already done it? Right. And so sometimes I wonder what I bring to the table because I feel like levity you guys <laughs> bring. <laughs> You bring so much. I can actually list the things that you guys are good at. And me, I'm like, I don't really know what I'm good at or what I bring to the table. Oh, Mindy. (laughs) I'm just glad you let me come. You bring a lot of wisdom and a lot of levity. Um, Left to our own devices, Julie and I would become probably morose conversationalists. (laughs) Oh no. This this whole thing might spiral down very quickly. (laughs) Oh no. Oh my goodness. But you're both faithful friends and seeing you both walk through seasons of life um, through prayer, um, knowing that you are struggling and you're just, you're looking for hope and encouragement. You're looking for what the Lord has for you and these stages that you both are walking through. And um, I just, it's, you're both so encouraging to me. I am blessed to be the youngest because I can look ahead. I have two people to look ahead to and Mm. see like, it's going to be okay. Like Marie's going through this now with her younger babies are starting to leave. And I'm, I'm anticipating that. And I'm like, okay, she's there. And I can look at Julie and, you know, and the things that she's going through. And then, you know, just seeing her, um, her honesty and her, her resilience. It's just amazing to me. So I always leave encouraged and feeling like you guys have given me so much. So. Y'all we're just a love fest here friends. on Midlife Matters I today. Know. <laughs> Virtual hug. <laughs> when well, I had no friends.
Since you were my friend. <laughs> we need but to play like real. a sad friend song right now or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, listeners, we hope you've enjoyed all the things we talked about today. There's really not time for I'm a fan, but I think what Julie and Mindy and I would all like to say is we are a fan of our listeners. We're a fan of your yeah. comments. We're a fan of you sharing the podcast. We're a fan of your emails. We're a fan of your messages on Instagram. It's so encouraging to us. It gives us the fire to keep going. So we just appreciate mm-hmm. that so much. Yeah. So I'd love to hear more from, from our listeners in this next year. Mm-hmm. I really would. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> and I think they hopefully heard that topic ideas are definitely something That's that what we I mean. could yeah. use. Yes. yes. <laughs> topic ideas are something that we could use. So definitely send those our way. But Julie and Mindy, I look forward to starting our fourth year. I'm glad that we've all admitted that we've had the occasional I'm quitting thought, (laughs) except for Julie. (laughs) But we are going to keep on keeping on. (laughs) What is it? A a cord of three is not quickly broken. That is true. And it's I mean, if there were only two of us, like if it was just Mindy and I, Mm -hmm. we probably would have thrown in the towel. Or if it was just Julie and I, we would have spiraled downhill and and ended. But the three of us together we keep it swinging here. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, like I tend to take, I tend to keep on things that I should have quit a long time ago too. You know, that's, that's the other, (laughs) that's the other side of that coin. So we just need to be in concert, you know, about where the Lord leads us and who knows how long we'll be doing this. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Well, we have our happiness school book for the next year. So you guys, one topic a month is taken care of, which automatically makes me feel more lighthearted. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Listeners, we need three topics a month. Send them our way. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Happy anniversary, Julie and Mindy. Hey, yes, happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. All right. We'll talk to you next week. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 We're so happy you joined us today. You can find the show notes for this episode at midlifematterspodcast.com. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.